PC Perspectives coverage of the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show is brought to you by AMD and the Next Generation A Series APU. We're here at the Synaptics booth at CES 2014. We're going to talk with Godfrey about ClickPad 2.0 integrated on this HP Spectre. It's a new touchpad kind of technology integration. We'll walk through some of the features of that. Great. <clears throat> Uh, what we have here is the HP Spectre 13. It's a brand new uh, book, uh, sorry, Ultrabook. Uh, what it features is it features our new ClickPad 2.0, which is, as you can see here, it's ultra wide, it's 140 millimeters by 55. Uh, but you notice here, we work with very closely with HP to do something called control zone. So outside of the normal touchpad area, we have uh, two different regions where uh, it's a different texture on the glass. And why do we do that? It makes the edge or the Windows uh, edge activation, Windows 8 edge activation, a lot easier. So from the left edge swipe, we can start switching applications. And of course, we all know about the charms bar. And uh, you initiate the charms bar there, and you can scroll through and select what you want. This is uh, this has been received very well, uh, certainly by the market. But from a user per, uh, user interface perspective. Uh, our user study, our usability studies have shown that this to be extremely uh, easy model to use to uh, uh, to initiate the Windows 8 gestures. The other thing we wanted to uh, talk to you about was uh, the ClickBack 2.0 device itself. Now, in addition to these uh, great features of HP's control zone, we've actually gone back and looked at all the negative feedback surrounding ClickPads in general. And what we've done with ClickBack 2.0 with TypeGuard is really perfected. You'll notice here, we have a, the mechanical mechanism that we have uh, invented, uh, it's very rigid. So you'll have very uniform activation all the way here uh, to, to all the different corners. And we find that this is one of the biggest grievances that consumers have with their click pads today. Is sometimes a corner doesn't activate properly or sometimes it doesn't activate at all. But our mechanical innovation, it's, uh, it's been very, very good in terms of usability and also reliability. Now, one other key aspect I want to show you is software technology called TypeGuard. The number one complaint from all of our uh, customers uh, has been uh, when you type on the keyboard on a notebook, uh, the cursor move. So we have invented TypeGuard, which is a palm rejection software. And you can see here, if I use my finger, the cursor moves on very quickly. But if I use my thumb, it completely, or sorry, if I put my palm in, it completely rejects it. Finger, thumb. So if I'm typing away, it rarely ever moves. Like I showed your corner case there because I had two uh, contacts on there, but if you've got a single contact, it's not a problem at all. Finger, recognizes right away, it rejects the palm. Very cool. Another product from Synaptics is the Force Pad. Uh, what's unique about this, this design? Well, first of all, Force Pad uh, is now shipping. Uh, the world's first Force Pad is shipping the HP Leap Book Folio 1040. Uh, this is a great ultra thin ultra book today. I think it's one of the thinnest uh, notebooks in the world. Now, the three key aspects are of, um, of ForcePad are that, first of all, it's ultra thin. It enables designs such as um, uh, this notebook, but also we have something called uniform activation. So anything from here, which is where you typically activate uh, a click pad, you can also have the same activation up here. You can hear the no you can hear the sound. So no matter where your hands are, or no matter where your finger is uh, throughout the whole surface area, we can activate the click. Uh, we think this is a great experience because uh, the only reason why click pads have an activation zone down here is because of the limitations of the mechanical hinge. The force pad, we've eliminated that. But the other really unique thing, in, in addition to replacing the click, uh, what we've done here, is, or the mechanical click, we've actually uh, have force sensing. And how this applies is that you can do things like gesture continuation. Right now we're on www.worldslongestwebsite.com. And if you have a website or a force pad, you can try this yourself. And then you just initiate a scroll. But instead of rowing like you would typically do on a, on a click pad, you just, keep your, you just keep pressure on it. Now, if you adjust the pressure, you can actually vary the scroll speed very easily. If you notice my fingers have not moved, I'm just varying the pressure and I can vary the scroll speed. Now, if you look at the application of this, um, you, you can look at it, you know, if you're in a, in a seat in a, on an airplane, you have to do some work. Instead of rowing like a madman, you just simply, oops, let, let the website refresh. 
you can just initiate a scroll, apply some pressure, and you can scroll through documents, very long documents, very easily. One other feature that we've added is something called silent surfing. And uh, because we've eliminated the click, there is actually no clicking sound. It's actually artificially generated by the computer. So if you want to put the um, microphone up there. So then that's uh, something you can disable or turn up or down anyway. Through the mixer. Oh, okay. Now, why we call it silent surfing is that we've all been in a conference room where you hear some madman clicking away and looking at different websites, and who knows what they're looking at. But now with ClickPad, uh, or with ForcePad, sorry, you can actually uh, avoid that clicking noise altogether uh, with silent surfing. Synaptics is also showing off a technology called ThinTouch, which uh, is interesting in that they've taken away the mechanical portions of the key. These aren't scissor keys anymore. They're actually using magnets, um, which they, it still types and everything. Everything works okay. Uh, it feels different, but not too bad. Uh, but what, what that has allowed them to do is they've used that empty space to install some capacitive touch technology. And with it, you can do some pretty cool things. Um, like if you're used to bringing up the charms bar, bringing up uh, app switching, selections, you can actually do that by using the keyboard, just by swiping across some of the touch-enabled keys. And if you want to change through the applications, you can do that this way as well. And it seems to work pretty well. These are still early prototype builds, um, but the technology is there. And it actually has another capability that I thought was pretty cool. If we go back in here, um, if you're somebody who uses keyboard shortcuts, you often forget what they are. You can hold down Control, and then if you just touch but not press, the buttons, it'll give you an idea of what the keyboard shortcut actually is. You can see cut, copy, paste, uh, save. And that's pretty cool for uh, people that might forget some of that kind of stuff as they go. But the interesting thing is when you make a keyboard capacitive in that way, you open up all kinds of new avenues for what you can do with a touch interface. All right, my name is Godfrey Chang, and what we're going to show you today are what we call the T-Rex concepts for a thin touch keyboard technology. Now. You know, Ultrabooks and clamshell notebooks have been, uh, you know, existed for a long time, but now we're seeing a lot of new technologies uh, in the new form, new form factor PCs. Uh, we see technologies or products like the Lenovo Yoga, which uh, the screen folds on itself, um, and you know, you basically hold in your hand, and you have the tablet and the keyboard in the back. Now, there are a couple issues with that uh, technology that we're working with all the companies to resolve. What do you do with the keyboard? Right now we have the natural, we have our thin touch keyboard which uses the magnetic ramps that I think you've seen in other videos. But what we're able to do with magnets is that we're able to, for example, if we were to close a lid, uh, we actually can retract all the keys and now they're completely flush with the uh, bezel, uh, which, which, which allows for uh, multiple benefits. First of all, the Z height of the notebook is now thinner because we've retracted the keys, you're not going to get the funny uh, prints of the keys on your screen. Yeah, we do get that a lot, don't we? Yes, yeah. absolutely we do. So if we can eliminate that, that's great. Uh, but you can return to a full, full form factor keyboard uh, with full functionality as soon as you open the lid. Now, another scenario is that uh, in the use in the scenarios where you have a yoga type of product where it folds on itself, this is actually not folding on itself. But if this were to fold around, uh, the keys would be locked in place, so when they're in your hands this way, uh, they're not all over the place. Now, one big advantage of our magnetic RAM technology over the traditional keyboards is that you cannot do this with the rubber domes uh, keyboard today. If you if you try to compress rubber dome keys, uh, over time they stay that way. Uh, it's, uh, it has retained memory, so the the performance degrades over time. Uh, so this type of technology is only available with uh, magnetic ramps like what we have uh, with uh, ThinTouch today. So ThinTouch T-Rex, uh, this allows for new form factor PCs, also allows for all the gestures that you saw with touch, and also allows for much thinner Z heights for your, uh, for your notebooks moving forward.